an emotion after they scored the first touchdown that I haven't seen them have before. When they came off the field, I mean, they were emotional about it. Right, and the thing about offensive line is the unit. So all of them have to buy in. It can't be just one. It can't be two. All of them have to buy in. And on this game, all of them bought in, and you see the results. John, here, here's a question I think a lot of people are going to have, and when we start taking the phone calls, go ahead and put the phone number up. We'll start getting the phone callers going. But a, a question a lot of people have had is, is, where did this team come from? What happened in the first four games that all of a sudden they just showed up like the Tennessee of old? Well, I think mainly when you think about it on the defensive end, because the offense had moved the balls sure. at times, that to me was the most shocking was the way the defense played. It looked like, as you say, yeah. Tennessee defense of old. But, but I agree with what Reggie was saying about the offensive line. I thought they really set a tone. And what, it was interesting to Mark Rick last week, the Georgia coach, yeah. who was probably one of the most candid coaches I've ever been around. He talked about, he said, this Tennessee offensive line is the best one I've seen. And I think a lot of people heard that and said, oh, he's saying that because he's playing them there. Sure, sure. But they really lived up to that billing. Yeah, he's, he's almost the Lou Holtz of the Southeastern Conference right now. Without, without the humor, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not near No the magic tricks. All right, let's take a look back at the game. Rick Russo, the sports director here in Knoxville at WVLT, has our game wrap. Well, the Volunteers were certainly energized by that loss of the Gators to the Auburn Tigers last week. Tennessee carried that momentum into the game with the Dogs and on their first drive drove 81 yards to score against Southern Miss and Arkansas State. They also scored on their first possession and went on to win the game. Tennessee does the same 35-13 over a Georgia team that has been rushing the football on an average 178 yards per game. Tennessee holds the Dogs to just 69 inside Neyland State. Coach, we're going to stop and run. You know, for the rest of the season, we're going to come around. We're going to go great. We're going to go great. Meanwhile, Tennessee was able to run the ball very effectively against the Georgia Bulldog defense. 190 total yards, 98 of them courtesy of Arian Foster, who scored three touchdowns after the game. Arian was asked about his head coach, Philip Fulmer. He's gotten a lot of heat lately about what's been going on here in Big Orange Country. The two and two start. Well, was that a factor, or was that in the back of your mind going into this game, Arian? It was. It was in the back of our minds. You know, we take each game as a statement game, you know what I'm saying? But be that as it may, this game actually has some implications for Coach Summer, and I'm happy for him, man. You know, he, we all love him, you know what I'm saying? And I don't think he, he, it's nothing like that, man. We just got to play hard for him every day. And this staff and, and Coach Summer is not a better, there's not a better leader in the country. And anybody, I think it's pretty much proven that anybody knows how to win football games any better than him. He's proven that here to everybody. You guys don't understand how much how much these kids care for their coaches and love their, the university and and uh, they were excited as heck to play this football game and, and prove people that, uh, that might have been doubting us uh, wrong. Well, coming in, Coach uh, Fulmer was 2-4 and four against Mark Rick. In fact, 0-3 oh, here inside Neyland and Stadium. He gets a big win, which could go a very long way in helping the Vols determine their success in the Southeastern Conference the rest of the way. So next week, that's going to be the most fun game. You know, we're going to be getting another one. So I think each week is a real big game. You know, it, it, it's just big that we're doing it. But I think you got to look at every week, you know, as you see, it's a big game. Coach Tess said, you know, it's going to be a good football team. You win as you see. you got to be a great football team. Again, the Volunteers improved to 3-2 and two overall, 1-1 one and one in Southeastern Conference conference play as they head to Starkville next week to take on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. From Neyland Stadium, Rick Russo, WVLT, Volunteer TV, Sports Overtime. All right, Rick, appreciate that. Now, here's the thing. The good points and the bad points, we do this every week. The bad points kind of difficult to come by, and Reggie's already upset with me for mine. So, okay, let's go ahead and go through the good points and bad points, and then John gets to sit here and, and cut us down about what we said. Okay, the good Tennessee stopped the run. Uh, the good, they established the run on offense, and the special teams were special. Uh, my bad, the only one I could come up with is was only one sack. I, I thought not enough quarterback pressure. Reggie completely disagreed with me. I do. I, and I'll tell you the person that actually... Reggie, here's yours first, and then I want you to tell me what I'm wrong. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the offensive line. They, they totally controlled the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's something that they... If you're going to have a good team, oh, you have to start with a line of scrimmage, and they totally controlled it. Leadership, fourth down, third quarter... Foster looks at the sidelines and, say, and says, don't bring out the punt team. That's the leader you're looking for. That's the guy that has to step in on the field and lead the team. That's, that's what I was speaking of when I spoke last time on the show, is that leadership. That's what I saw from him, and that's what I saw from that team. Of course, the special teams obviously stepped up and performed very well. Uh, and didn't have any bad points. I think this was an overall dominated game by Tennessee. John, any bad points you would have come up with? 
Uh, he mentioned the special teams, the vast improvement there. I agree with that. The only thing I didn't, I, I didn't like was with, I think Jonathan Hefty, obviously he'd been criticized. His coaches had told him he needs to do a little differently on punt returns. Uh, I just didn't think he handled things well. He let one ball hit, roll for 20 yards, uh, maybe fair cut another one that he could have returned. But I think he was really trying to play it safe because of what he'd been told. I think he maybe overreacted. You know, you told the story, Reggie, before we came out of that story just now by Rick, but uh, it's kind of the same story that I saw when I was on the sidelines and was right next to the Tennessee bench. It was that fourth down. I think it was in the first half of the fourth down, that midfield for Tennessee. And somebody turned and said, okay, let's go for it and let's run the end around. And I said, no, 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 no. You've got to establish an attitude right now. Mm-hmm. Fourth down, you're telling, you're telling Georgia where you're going, you're going there, and they're not going to stop you. That's Tennessee football from an offensive line standpoint. And then you had a point that you said as far as another key play where that's in depth. Well, exactly. It was third down, uh, and I believe it was like third and three, third and four. And I recall that Eric Young went down. He actually just came off. And McClendon came in. Third down, that's a critical down. Either that or you're going to, either you're going to get seven, you're going to kick a field goal. He came in. They get the first down. They continue on. They score. That's Tennessee football. Whoever goes out, there's one behind him that's going to come up. Before there was a, a, Co- a Cozy Coleman, there was a Jarvis Rito. Before I came along, there was Chad Clifton. We've always had that tradition, that history of when somebody goes down, somebody's ready to step up. And that's the Tennessee way. That's what they showed on Saturday. All right, let's, let's start taking some phone calls after the break. And maybe these calls will be a little different than they were just a couple of weeks ago after Tennessee. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll take those phone calls coming up next on the Locker Room Black by Park West Medical Center. The Locker Room is presented by Park West Medical Center. Treated well, well treated. And sponsored by your East Tennessee Joe Newbert Collision Center. The BASF Volunteer Athletic Scholarship Fund. Gridiron Burgers. Mountain Adventures and Smoky Mountain Motorsports. Benzino's Heatoria and Tennessee's D1 Athletic Training Facility. Are you having a hard time counting these guys at night? We're talking about insomnia in this week's Men's Wellness Minute. The Men's Wellness Minute is brought to you by Park West Medical Center. Treated well, well treated. Insomnia is a sleep disorder that can be caused by a number of things. It can be related to too much on your mind to be stressed out can be related to going, not having enough sleep, not getting enough sleep, going to bed too late, getting up too early. Sometimes it can be related to other things, medication. A lot of us, when we can't sleep late at night, we'll get up and watch television or get on the computer. That's one of the worst things you can do because, first of all, you're turning on the lights in the house, and so the bright lights are going to tell your brain that it's time to wake up. And the electromagnetic field from the television set or the computer set is also going to tell your brain that it's time to wake up. So that's actually an alerting signal. For more on the Men's Wellness Minute, visit us online at treatedwell.com or call us at 374-PARK. At West, we say the best no-hassle buying experience. At West, we say the low West price. Plus new Chevy cars as low as $99.87. We'll save up to $9,000. Shop right now at WestChevrolet.com. At West, we say great fuel and GM's 100,000 mile warranty and OnStar add up to real American value. More East Tennessee and five Chevrolet and more buy from West. Because we do If you're looking for your next adventure, look no further than Adventure Lane Up Exit 407 in Kodak. Whether it's mountain adventures or Smoky Mountain Motorsports, you will find your adventure here. All the big names are available at one place. Whatever you want, you'll find it at Adventure Lane. I'm former Bob, Bruce Walker. Anyone who knows me knows that I love to ride a bike. And whatever I need for my bike, I get right here. Adventure Lane. Mountain adventures and Smoky Mountain Motorsports. Teaming up to handle any adventure request on Adventure Lane. Looking to get a handle on your home building or remodeling project? Let the design experts at Gray Hodges open the door to the world of Timberlake, one of America's leading manufacturers of cabinetry. Timberlake's reputation for well-crafted, full-featured cabinetry is reflected in a variety of beautiful woods and finishes. Let the experts at Gray Hodges bring that beauty to your home with personal design that affordably suits your style and space. 
Create a sense of style throughout your home with Timberlake Cabinetry from Gray Hodges.